Hey guys, it's Kim here and welcome to my Game of the Year feature. What is the Game of the Year feature, you ask? Well, let me tell you. Basically, you may or may not have noticed, it is December and it is coming to the end of 2013. So I thought, what better the way to wrap up the year than sit down with a couple of my friends and talk to them about what their favourite games of 2013 have been. What better way to start than uh, tell you guys about my top 5 games of 2013. Starting with, in position number 5, Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn. Uh, this might be no surprise to many of you given how much coverage of it is on my channel, but when I first saw Final Fantasy XIV, um, when it was originally released a few years ago, oh my god, what an abomination it was. And I met the director and producer at the time of its release, and my main questions to him were, why? Why did you release this broken, broken game that I had such high hopes for? I mean, it's an MMO, and it's Final Fantasy. You know, it, it should have been the perfect marriage. So. I was very cynical when it came up to the re-release. I, I really, I, I didn't believe that it was going to be any good, but when I was finally given a, a closed beta key by Square Enix and I dived in there, I was so surprised at how completely different it was. And really the turning point for me was meeting the new director producer, Naoki Yoshida-san, um, who is such an MMO fanatic, like he, he really, this guy knows MMOs, he's played so many, he's a super hardcore MMO player. Yeah, so I've, you know, as, as you know from my channel, I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy XIV, especially with Rhythian and Nalzi and Duncan, and um, I, I know that it's not... Uh, it's not ideal for most MMO players. It's not very hardcore. It is quite basic, but that's what I like about it because I'm not a great MMO player. The um, first one I played is World of Warcraft, and I'll be honest, like after a couple of years of playing that, there were still a lot of things I didn't quite understand, you know, which Final Fantasy XIV, because it was pitched for uh, fans of Final Fantasy or people who didn't know what an MMO were, especially um, PS3, PS4 players who wouldn't know what an MMO is because there aren't any MMOs on the consoles, um, it was very good at really breaking down what uh, what an MMO is, how it works, how important your role is within a team, within a, a kind of a dungeon group or a raid, you know, and how important it was for you to work accordingly to your role and not go off and be a Leroy Jenkins, you know, to if you're a healer to support and heal, if you're um, if you're a tank to really get in there and build up the aggro and I came away from it kind of knowing a lot more about what I'm meant to do in World of Warcraft and Guild Wars and all that kind of thing and um, and also it's Final Fantasy and for as a final uh, uh, and as a long-standing die-hard Final Fantasy fan um, for me it's brilliant that that the team, the dev team, have remembered that this is a Final Fantasy game and put loads of things in there like Chocobos, Moogles, Magitek armor, you know, really put a lot of detail and attention um, into it. And, and the music, just the music, man, like as soon as I loaded it up and heard that intro sweep, I was just like, oh, I'm home. So yeah, Final Fantasy XIV is definitely my fifth game of 2013 and I can't wait to see what kind of updates and new worlds and new patches uh, Noki Yoshida-san will be bringing to us. So moving on now to number four. This one might surprise you because you probably haven't heard me talking about it very much, but it is Animal Crossing A New Leaf on the 3DS. As soon as this game released, I got it and uh, I haven't stopped playing it since. Like I know a lot of people have kind of left their villages and they're getting over on the weeds and all their villagers are like where are you but no I still check in every single day you know even if it's just five minutes to pick up my mail and pick up some weeds I'm still in it I'm still taking I love the I love the seasonal holidays like Halloween that was amazing I can't wait to see what happens on Christmas and I love my villagers, you know, I've got Boone who's a baboon and he's really, really sweet and um, I've got a duck called Miranda. Now one, one thing um, one of my friends has in his village is um, a little uh, a little bear thing called Flurry and I, I really hope to attract Flurry because Flurry is adorable and every time I go visit this friend's village I'm like, hey Flurry! You know, trying to subvert him or her, I can't figure out the sex, but you know, um, to come over to my town. And I don't know what it is, like I guess maybe it feeds into my addictive nature, but it's it's so nice to just play a game that's quite sedate, colourful, happy, and everyone's just lovely, you know? Except for um, the captain, because I really do worry about him. I think that maybe he's uh, a little bit self-aware, because sometimes he's said things to me that have made me think, how do you know that, you weirdo? <laughs> 
But yeah, Animal Crossing, absolutely love it. It just, for me, it's like a nice warm hug before you go to bed and it just sets you up and it's just full of good vibes and good times. And I'm like, this is probably gonna sound a little bit sad, but you know, just having the friendships with my villagers and knowing that if I've had a rough day, I can just, you know, hop on down to Dim Sums, which is my, which is my town, and uh, you know, say hi to everyone and give them little presents, get little presents for them. And it just, it makes me feel happy. And it's just, it's nice, isn't it? So Animal Crossing is in at number four. In at number three is probably no surprise to you. It is The Last of Us. Talk about a kind of magnum opus for the PS3. Just what a way to go out on a console generation. Ah, do, do I really need to say any more? If you haven't got it, you know, just buy a PS3 now and play it. I mean, now that PS4 out, PS3s are going to be nosediving in value. Just play it. You know, the relationship between Joel and Ellie is unlike anything else I've ever experienced in PC games, in console games, in gaming in general. That kind of father-daughter relationship, you know, the bitterness of Joel initially and the kind of, you know, upbeat relentlessness of Ellie and seeing this world that is just ruined um, through Ellie's eyes, you know, who's never experienced experience kind of anything modern like that part where she finds um some teenage girl's diary and he's like is this really all that everyone had to think about was like boys and homework and what to wear you know and I have to think about when my next meal is gonna be and whether or not my face is gonna get eaten off by a fungus uh, zombie just the emotion and I could have explored that world endlessly you know I, I the thing for me was seeing a post-apocalyptic world that still had some remnants of humanity and and society and of going through it after it had been ravaged by cordyceps and seeing how society has kind of broken down you know and you know ultimately it was all about joel and ellie and you know i'm still undecided about the ending i'm not going to say anything more than that but getting there I mean, you guys know, you saw my series, you know, I was crying every five seconds, I was cheering, I was happy, I was sad, you know, I laughed at the kind of sweet, funny moments, and I was in floods of tears doing those horrible moments where you thought, oh god, you know, what is going to happen next? And it really touched a nerve with me, and I keep thinking about it, and I keep coming back to it and thinking about the moments. And, and for me, actually, my favourite part was um, when you went through the sewers, and um, you found the the notes um, from that guy, I can't remember his name, you know, the kind of cheery notes, but then you saw how the people living in the sewers had this happy little community, but unfortunately how, you know, just one zombie got in and everything went to crap, you know, and everything went to hell. And, you know, I really need to know what happened to this guy, and I'm really hoping that in the DLC maybe we'll find out more. But yeah, so number three, The Last of Us, and honestly guys, if you haven't played it yet, you, you have to. It, it is one of the most definitive games of our generation and I hope that other game developers are inspired by it and follow suit. So with something like The Last of Us in at number three, that probably leaves you wondering, well, what's going to be in at number two and number one? Now, number two, again, it's probably going to surprise you because um, I started playing this uh, before I properly launched my channel and I was just a video editor uh, behind the scenes, but I, I've kept playing it ever since as well because it's a big old game. But number two is Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. So this was released earlier this year and Oh, I waited so long for it. I was so excited. I treated myself to the collector's edition, which came with a gorgeous magic book and a little drippy plushy doll. I am a big fan of Studio Ghibli and a huge fan of Level 5. I think they make amazing games. Um, you know, RPGs like Rogue Galaxy and all that kind of thing. They've got a really good history with JRPGs. And just... Ah, oh, I, I can't tell you how much I love this game. Just the sweetness of like kids off on an adventure to save the world against this kind of overarching evil. And you know, there's nothing kind of subversive. It is just a good old fashioned heroic adventure. And you know, drippy, the localization for me is what really made it was the effort that went into not just doing a straight translation, but really bringing in the personality and drippy's Welshness, like his little kind of slang and the way he spoke. I think he's definitely one of the best characters I've ever seen um, in, in gaming. Like, he's just so lovely. And just the creativeness that Studio Ghibli brought to it, like the, the monsters and the creatures, and it's just, and it looked gorgeous. 
absolutely gorgeous. It was crisp, it was beautiful, it was colourful, and just the music by Joe Hisaishi, who obviously is known for his um, compositions in various Studio Ghibli films, just so uplifting and stirring and emotional, and yeah, how could you not expect me to say Nino Kuni isn't in my top five list? Like, I'm still playing it now, like, it is a big old game, and it's really nice to see that as well, that, you know, JRPGs are becoming a fleeting thing on next-gen consoles, well, on current-gen consoles even, and and um, just because of the size of them and how much money and time it takes into producing them. So in a world where sadly JRPGs are almost a dying breed at the moment, it was amazing to finally be rewarded with this proper kind of almost old school JRPG that had a big world, a big storyline, an, an epic soundtrack and was gorgeous and wasn't kind of cheapened because they couldn't match production costs on PS3, you know? And yeah, so I'm still playing it, I'm still ploughing through it, and I'll be honest, I don't really want my adventure to end with an Eno Kuni, and I really, really, really hope that Level 5 has more in store for us with the PS4 and Xbox One, you know, I cannot wait to see what these guys have next. So yeah, Nino Kuni, without effort, in at number two. Which leaves the empty slot of number one. Now, this was really hard for me. While kind of thinking up my list of game, um, my list of games of this year, I was thinking of things like Fire Emblem Awakening, Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon, Bioshock Infinite, all these kind of titles, and. You know, I haven't put these in top five. It's been a very close run thing. Very close run. If this was top ten, those games would definitely be in there. But my number one game is Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. It's not a very long game. I'm, you know, I'm still plowing through it because I don't want to rush it. I want to... But when I first heard this game was coming, I was so excited. I am a huge, huge fan of the Legend of Zelda series. I love it. You know, it is my favourite gaming series. I've played A Link to the Past so many times. You know, it is the game of my childhood. So going back to it on the 3DS was really strange but lovely at the same time because it was like going home. Just the map layout and knowing where everything was and knowing where all the easter eggs are but things are different and different enough to keep it fresh without pushing me away and that's what I love about it so much was going back to an old world with a new perspective and the dungeons like using what I loved as well is how well designed for the 3DS A Link Between Worlds is. It really takes advantage of the hardware. The 3D perspective used in dungeons to solve dungeon puzzles is genius and it was so surprising. You know, as soon as I put the cartridge in, as soon as I op opened up the game and I heard that music, I was like, oh my god, my heart just like was beating so fast. I was like, I'm home. Like, uh, I can't tell you guys how happy I am that this game exists and even when I finish it, I'm gonna keep playing it again and again and again because I really, I am in love with this game. And what I love as well is that it, it really rewards Legend of Zelda fans with the amount of Easter eggs from every single other Legend of Zelda game. Familiar faces, Majora's Mask in your house, music from other titles. I absolutely love it. And I know people will be like, oh, well, it was a bit short and blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I don't care. This is my top five list, not yours. And if we're talking about games that really brought me joy and happiness and entertainment in 2013, A Link Between Worlds absolutely nailed it for me. So that is, without a doubt, my number one game of 2013. And do you know what? I'm going to go and play it now. So that was 2013. If I'm honest, we were spoilt this year, especially with the launch of next-gen consoles. Okay, so there's not a great deal going on with them at the moment, but God, wait until companies finish their development for PS3 and Xbox 360 and really start focusing on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And I cannot wait to see what we've got in store for us. This is a great time to be a gamer. It really, really is. That is my top five game of the year feature. Next up, Rhythian is going to be joining me. And then, as I mentioned, uh, I've got various other members of the Odds cast joining me over the days in December. So please tune in, join in, and do you know what? Let me know what your top five games are in the comments, or on Twitter, on, on my Facebook page, on my Reddit page. And let's celebrate 2013, because what a year it was. So thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see you very soon.